Shalom. Giving all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rachahakurash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect. And uh, real briefly, I wanted to go into Deuteronomy 28 and 68 and deal with an argument uh, that is always presented by Christians when dealing with this or naysayers of the true doctrine of Yahweh Bashmi al Shah because, you know, um, I was watching his live feed repost by the elder Manat the Zakba and he mentioned, you know, this argument in that uh, lesson. And uh, I'm just going to do a quick uh, breakdown of it, you know, uh, for those who may be presented with that argument and how to dismantle it because you have particular uh, Edomites, all right, uh, who call themselves Christians and you have our people who are hearing us break down these scriptures and automatically they're programmed to figure out a counter and we're in a spiritual war all right they're coming with their attack and we're coming with ours through the spirit and most of their arguments are going to be carnal um and at the end of the day the natural man which is a carnal man cannot receive the things of the spirit now when you read this in Deuteronomy 28 and 68, it says, And Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt, okay, which is uh, bondage. All right, and we know that uh, Revelation, the 11th chapter, deems this a spiritual Egypt, okay, a spiritual Sodom in Egypt. The final captivity of the Israelites would be called a, you know, a um, spiritual Egypt, which you can go to other scriptures and link Egypt to the Edomites because they would be the modern day Pharaoh. They would be the rulers of this new end time captivity, which is Babylon the Great. Okay, so the Lord said, I the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. And this is speaking of the slave ships, man. Okay, which all tribes were on slave ships. Okay, now amongst that Judah, Benjamin, and Levi were the most sought after, all right, of the heathen. All right, but you had Native American, all right, you had various other tribes that were on slave ships as well. Some were taken from the Americas back to Spain and various different places as well, okay? And you had a lot of so-called Native Americans and the other tribes on the slave ships with so-called Negroes, man. You just have to do the research, all right? But the Lord, all right, prophesied that within this scripture, Okay, because, you know, being an Israelite and growing up in America, you always heard about this hardcore slavery and captivity that we, that we went into. All right. But we never got counseling on why we were just pretty much thrown out into the world. And no one pretty much bound up the wounds, man. Now those wounds are being bounded up. All right. And we have ointment through the Holy Spirit and we've received counseling because you need counseling, man, after what has happened to us because this things that happen to us affect generations on down the line man all right and our people are refusing that counseling you even have particular of, of our people now saying that slave ships never existed and all of these various different doctrines and arguments but we know that it happened but why did it happen but let's get to the argument it says and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. There's no record of the Israelites going back into Egypt via ships. Okay. By the way, I spake whereof, all right. By the way, whereof I spake unto thee that thou shalt see it no more again, meaning as a nation. All right. Because after the scattering of 70 AD, all right. And pretty much after that, we were scattered. And we haven't been all 12 tribes in Jerusalem, all right, since pretty much the time of Solomon, man. Then after that, you know, it was just rebellions and, and captivities and splits and all sorts of things, man. So as a nation, we haven't been in Jerusalem together, all right? And the Lord is going to reestablish that when he brings the throne of David back and places us in that land, all right? So we wouldn't see it no more again, meaning our, our land as a nation. Okay, now you may have particular Jakes go over there and visit, or you may have a few who go over there and set up shop, like Ben Ami, 
but that's not a fulfillment of us going back to that land as a nation okay it says in there all right in this spiritual egypt ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bond women and no man shall buy you so right there that's the argument because here it is you'll have edomite christians and various even our own people i've seen so-called black men all right get onto the video and use this argument to say well we do know that the african slaves which they were israelites were 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 sold they were on auctioning blocks and being bought by their enemies right here it says and no man shall buy you and that's their argument now how is something sold without it being bought because sold is the past tense of something uh, uh that that was bought if someone bought shoes from you all right later on down the line you'll say oh i sold those shoes to such and such or, i sold i sold those goods to such and such i sold so many oils today how could you have sold them if no man bought them so what is this speaking of that no man would buy us I uh, is speaking of no man would be able to get us out of this situation. How will we be get, got out of this situation? The Lord's son, the most high son, Yahweh Shai, who will be sent as a savior. Now, let's look up the word for buy so we can get understanding on this. Okay. And no man shall buy you. That Hebrew word is kana, which means to get, acquire, buy, possess to get to acquire to obtain and one another thing we have to also understand that we're reading the old english things are worded in ways that we don't communicate all right in these times man so it says of god originated creating redeeming his people all right god originating creating redeeming his people acquiring to be bought to cause to possess now let's look at a scripture where this uh narrative is used where this same word is used uh let's see here nehemiah nehemiah the uh fifth chapter in the eighth verse it says and i said unto them we we after our ability have redeemed our brethren the jews which were sold unto the heathen. So at this point, they redeemed. They 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 took their brethren back. They saved their brethren out of the captivity that they were going unto. But this captivity that we're in now, no man would be able to save us from. Okay, and we're gonna get more edification. I said that I said unto them, we are, we after our ability have redeemed our brethren the Jews, which were sold unto the heathen. And will ye even sell your brethren, or shall they be sold unto us? Then they held their peace and found nothing to answer. So right there, you can see how that word was used for getting someone or redeeming them, okay, out of a captivity. All right, now let's uh, see how we will be delivered. Let's get uh, the book of, let's see here. Let's see here let's get uh isaiah 59 real quick because how could something be uh, uh uh how could we be bought okay or sold but no one bought us that doesn't make any sense but these are the carnal arguments that these people trying to naysay this doctrine is going to come with man <laughs> stupid man isaiah 59 we know that the israelites will go into a major captivity in the latter days man okay and how will we get there via the ships okay now let's see and that doesn't mean every israelite that's in captivity was on a slave ship as well <laughs> just want to put that out there now um this is uh isaiah 59 and 15 yea truth fell it and he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. Okay, and that's where we are today. And here it is, we're pleading for righteousness, 
but we're a prey. How the hell are we going to get out of this situation in which a heathen judge rules the earth who doesn't care for the ways of righteousness, who doesn't care for a, a true judgment, who doesn't acknowledge or honor the ways of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai? The Lord is displeased when he looks down at this situation, man. Okay? Now it says, and he saw that there was no man and wonder that there was no intercessor. None of us could save you. None of us could save ourselves. Okay? Now the Lord does send men in the spirit to preach the gospel that will save you. But that man himself cannot save you. Okay? And he, and he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness it sustained him now who's the arm of yahweh bashim yahweh shai man that's yahweh shai who's the arm of the most high yahweh that's yahweh shai let's get isaiah 52 real quick isaiah 52 and 10 the lord have made bare his holy arm, which is his right hand, and the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. So that's how we will be saved, through the right hand of the Most High Yahweh, man. Okay? The, 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 let's just type in right hand and save, and I guarantee you, you'll see it. save with thy right hand that's how we're going to be delivered through the right hand of the most high not through any man on the earth man uh, psalm 60 and 5 that that beloved may be delivered save with thy right hand which is that arm and hear me save with thy right hand you see it again yep psalms 138 and 7 though i walk in the midst of trouble that will revive me and thou shalt stretch forth thine hand, and the wrath of thy enemies at thy right hand shall save me. Okay, and that's that hidden manna that particular of our people can't get. So that's how we're going to be saved. That's why the scriptures say here, uh, trust it in man. See how I can, let me see if I can find his notes in Jeremiah. Yep. Now a lot of people use this to say you can't trust a man. That's not what this is talking about. Okay? Let's just go to it. Because I mean, do I trust the brothers that are around me? Of course I trust them. But I don't look to them for my salvation. They're, they they can't save me. Okay, none of the men above or below me can save me, right? None of them. Now, there's particular things that they can do to add to me being built up and being acceptable by Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, but they can't save me. As the scriptures say, no man will save you. Okay, Jeremiah, uh, let's see, Jeremiah 17 see here real quick give me one second oh man this is a uh... yep I got it Jeremiah 17 and 5 thus saith the Lord curse be the man that trusteth in man and make it flesh his arm meaning you're looking to a man as your arm and what it means by your arm is by your you you looking to a man for your salvation you've had particular men come on the earth and say they are the messiah that you you, you know that's 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 <laughs> and you still have that into this day so when this says curse be the man that trusted the man it ain't saying i can't trust the brother next to me or we don't trust the apostles and the elders if we trust them we wicked no this is saying Cursed is they, all right, uh, uh, cursed are they 
that make it flesh that their arm and trusteth in a man as if he is your salvation and whose heart departed from the Lord. And when you do that, your heart departs from the Lord, man. Okay, let's read it in the NLT. This is what the Lord says. Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans and who rely on human strength. Okay, and what, what strength is going to deliver us? It's going to be the strength of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Okay, you could get that in Isaiah, the uh, 19th chapter. It tells you that he's going to send us a Savior. Isaiah 19 and 21. Or 19 and 19. And that day there should be an altar to Yahweh in the midst of the land of Egypt. And a pillar at the border thereof. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. All right. And this is speaking of this spiritual Egypt because Egypt had already been destroyed. Okay. Show me in the scriptures where there was a great deliverance of the Israelites from Egypt again. That surpassed the uh, deliverance from ancient Egypt. No, this is speaking in spirit of us being delivered from this major captivity here in Babylon. A great where all 12 tribes are. Okay, all 12 tribes are over here in Babylon, a great thus saith prophecy. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness. And this is the sacrifice. This is the altar where we're doing these, going out on the highways and the byways and, and, and ultimately doing these videos. Each member of the elect repenting, you're a sacrifice. That's an altar. All right. And the prayers go up to the heavenly father through Yahweh Shai, man, and the angels. So that he can swell that, smell that sweet savor. And at an appointed time, he's going to end all of this shit, man. That's why we have to cry unto the Father, man. You have to earn for the kingdom with your soul. With your spirit, you know, right? It says, in, uh, There should be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt, and a pillar at the border thereof. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto Yahweh of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they shall cry unto the Lord, because of the oppressors and he shall send them a savior and a great one and he shall deliver them okay and i'm gonna end this off in deuteronomy 28 and uh so you christians you know all of you people coming with that dumb argument that ain't what that's talking about man that's a stupid argument we were sold but nobody bought us Deuteron and, 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 and we're making so much sense that they're going out of their way and, and, and even sounding retarded to naysay it, man. Deuteronomy 28 and 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday and as the blind gropeth in darkness and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. And thou shalt only be oppressed and spoiled ev evermore and no man shall save thee. No man shall save thee. So you're not going to... Um, Jesse Jackson, all these various leaders that Esau's forcing down your throat. No, those, the, the, you know, that the, 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 they're not going to save you. Now, men were sent to guide you to salvation. All right. But th those men themselves ain't going to get you out of that situation. It's going to be Yahweh through Yahweh Shai, man. So hopefully I'll edify Shalom.